So hi guys, I want to talk to you about To Kill a Mockingbird. Um, I know that when you guys were in my class several weeks ago, we were finishing um, chapter 4, and you guys have now made it to chapter 16, I believe. You have a quiz this week on chapter 16, or chapters 1 through 16. So I wanted to go through a couple of, um, you know, main ideas in the book, just to kind of um, teach you online and make sure that we're all kind of on the same page. But I wanted to go over a couple of things. Um, so as you guys know, Scout is not having that great of a year in first grade. And she makes a promise with Atticus that she is going to go to school. She'll do what she's supposed to do um, as long as Atticus keeps reading and teaching her at home. Um, so she agrees to that. She is going to do her part. And so she comes home from school and she finds um, some gum in the hole in the tree. And Jem comes home and says, what are you chewing on? And he tells her to spit it out right away, being her older brother. Um, the three of them are trying to peek in the window at the Rudley house. They are, you know, you got to remember this is Maycomb County, Alabama. They are bored. They are using their summers to try to get Boo Radley to come out of his house. They are trying to do anything they can to get his attention. Um, and then one night while they're sneaking and trying to look in the house, he actually, Jem gets his pants caught on the fence. And he's so frightened by who Boo Radley really is that he doesn't go back for his pants until later. But what's interesting is that the author, um, Harper Lee, is starting to use a lot of suspense. She's trying to get you guys to understand that um, who this Boo Radley really is. So he is, you're going to come to find out that Boo Radley is actually alive. Um, but when he goes back to get his pants, he sees that the pants are nicely folded for him. And so our brains kind of go, oh, well, who could have folded those pants? That's kind of weird. Um, and so they keep finding all of these neat things in the hole in the tree. They find a pocket watch. They find gum. They find those Indian pennies. Um, and they keep on wondering, who is all? who are all these gifts from? And then they come to find out um, on a sad afternoon that Mr. Radley has plugged the hole in the tree with cement. Because his reasoning is, is that if, the, if there are too many holes in the tree, the tree is going to die. And so he goes in there and he plugs the hole, which kind of kills the excitement of getting gifts for Scout and Jim. But they're kind of, they're accepting that um, the gifts might be coming to an end because Mr. Riley doesn't want the tree to die. Um, another main event that's happening is Miss Maudie's house lights on fire. She really doesn't like to spend a lot of time in her house anyway. But she, her house lights on fire, and no one notices that um, Boo Radley has come out of his house, and he put a blanket around Scout without her even noticing. So that's another ding, 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 that Boo Radley is not who we think he is. He's actually alive. Um, the whole fact that maybe he hurt his father with scissors was a rumor that we we're trying to guess and make our own inferences at this point. Um, so Boo Radley is starting to slowly come out. They're not real sure about when he's going to keep appearing. Um, word is spreading that Atticus is defending Tom Robinson, an African-American. And I want you guys to really understand that Atticus is trying to inspire change. He is um, trying to change the view. So Harper Lee created Atticus. And because she created Atticus, she wanted him to be the character in her novel that was going to inspire change in 1963. So, by creating Atticus, she wanted to change the view of how people were thinking about African Americans. And so she designed a character who was a lawyer that would be defending an African American in court. Whether or not it was the right thing to do at the time, Atticus said, yes, this is the right thing to do. We are going to, we are going to defend an African American even if I don't win, I can at least say that I tried. Because in 1963, African Americans were seen as two-thirds of a person. And Harper Lee wanted to, you know, that's what great artists do. They want to create 
Um, they want to create stories. They want to create art. They want to create something that's going to inspire change. And so that's what Harper Lee was trying to do with her character of Atticus. And he has a lot of beautiful lines in this book like, you know, I just want to love everybody. Um, I don't care what color their skin are, what color their skin is. I just want to love everybody. And Atticus is a, is a great role model. He's a hero. It really draws out our theme of, you know, loving people for who they are. And even when Mrs. DeBose uh, has such nasty things to say as they walk by your house, Atticus always chooses love. Um, so that is a great theme in the story. What is Harper Lee saying about love? She is saying that everyone deserves the same amount of love and justice, whether you have white skin, whether you have any kind of color skin. You deserve justice. You deserve love. Um, so you're going to say, by creating Atticus, Harper Lee was trying to inspire change and to make people see that it's okay to defend African Americans. And so they are going to court. Um, and they are going to, that's going to be playing out in the following chapters. We're going to be going over the court, the trial scene, the next time I make you guys one of these videos. But I just wanted to spend a little bit of time making sure you guys understand the story. Um, it's still one of my favorites, even now. And I realize that, you know, ninth grade, you guys are not real excited. I have my own ninth grader, I, my, my ninth grade son right now, trying to get him to read is... It's a little bit difficult, but um, I can tell you that if you just keep reading, you're going to find that you're going to connect with the right kind of books, and they're going to inspire change in you. Um, so Aunt Alexandra and Uncle Jack come to visit. Aunt Alexandra it has her own racism. She's not. She does not want her brother Atticus to be defending an African American. She is a true Southern... You know, back in the 60s, Southerners, white Southerners would never even have thought about defending an African American. And so she is trying to change Scout into being more girly. She's trying to change Atticus's mind. She is a conflicting character that we kind of have to deal with. Um, but I did want to go over in Chapter 10, um, Harper Lee. Um, uses Atticus and a couple of other characters to explain. Let me go back here. So I wanted to go over this. They, they said it's a sin to kill a mockingbird. And I want you guys to really understand that, yes, mockingbirds are in this novel, but they're not, you know, they, they're not really talking about the mockingbirds that you are going to see on a tree. It's really about using mockingbirds as a symbol for innocence, and for people who don't harm others. And she says, Mockingbirds don't do one thing but make music for us to enjoy. They don't do one thing but sing their hearts out for us. And so I want you guys to really understand that, yes, Harper Lee is trying to inspire change. But she's also using, you know, the power of symbolism to reach her readers and to have you guys understand that ev nearly every character in this book is a Mockingbird. Maybe not Aunt Alexandra, maybe not Mrs. DeBose, but Jem is young and innocent. Scout is super young and innocent. Tom Robinson, in, in my opinion and many, many others, Tom Robinson has always been a mockingbird. He's innocent. He never wanted to hurt anyone. The Yules, I don't believe they are mockingbirds. They have, it depends on what part of the story you believe, but I never believe that Tom Robinson would ever hurt Mayella Yule or the Yule family. And so I've always considered Tom Robinson to be innocent. I've always thought of Dill or Atticus. Those are our mockingbirds. Those are our symbolism for, you know, it's a sin to kill a mockingbird. It's a sin to um, change people from innocent, you know, wonderful people into, you know, liars and, you know, such as the Yules. Mr. Yule was you know, we, most people believe that Mr. Yule was lying about what Tom Robinson did to, did to his daughter. So I don't consider him to be a mockingbird. But that's just something I wanted you guys to get is, you know, authors who are phenomenal, they know how to use this figurative language. They know how to pull at your heartstrings using symbolism. So I wanted to just spend some time going over that. 
Um, but basically, the story is about to get really good. You guys are past chapter 12, which is where I'm going to stop for this presentation. But um, the next presentation, we're going to be talking about the trial and how Atticus completely, if it wasn't for 1963, Atticus would have definitely proven that Tom Robinson could have never hurt Mayella Yule because he doesn't even fight with the right hand. But we will go over that in the next video, but I just wanted to be on the same page with you and to kind of, you know, have you understand that these guys are, they're in Alabama, the kids are hanging out, they're trying to discover who they are, grow into, you know, um, they're, I mean, the scout's in second grade, so she's still young. She doesn't understand. She's trying to figure out where my dad goes every day. She's trying to figure out when Dill's going to come back so they can have more adventures. But we are going to get to the court scene. I hope this helped a little bit. Um, I'm going to be keep, I'm going to keep doing these um, so we're on the same page. But I hope this helps, and I will talk to you guys real soon in our next lecture. All right, bye for now. Stay safe.